Hey guys, how you doing out there? This is Kelly Cook, Everything Phoenix. We are going to talk about tourism in Arizona, but is Arizona the new Hollywood? Is Phoenix the new Hollywood? Is Hollywood going to maybe make a case to move some of its operations, the film industry in general, over to Phoenix? I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what happens here. We're gonna check that out and some more on this video. And we're going to jump in. There's some fun stuff too. We got some spring training stuff. We have some water issues, okay? Or some discussion about water, right? Water is always a hot topic, especially in the desert. And uh, it's going to continue to be a hot topic. So stick around for that. We're going to cover the latest and greatest that is coming out on the water issues for the Phoenix area, guys. And then if you're really going to do us a solid or maybe you're just bored, hit that subscribe button really quick. That'll just take about a half a second. And uh, we'd love to get our video out to more and more people who could benefit from this news about all these things that have to do with Phoenix, Arizona and the future of Phoenix, Arizona. Not just real estate, but development and resorts and everything living in Phoenix, guys. So thank you so much for joining. We're gonna jump right in. I'm gonna share my screen as I always do. Land investors form Valley Film Production Company after Arizona approves incentives. Now this is interesting, guys. The state of Arizona is actually making a push here for um, the film industry to, you know, we're so close. Let's see if we can attract some of these, these actors, actresses, projects, et cetera. Let's take a look at what this says. Now, Anita Verma, who uh, is the CEO, owner, or founder of Verma Land, which is like huge out, especially out in the West Valley in terms of the amount of land they have um, oversight on, it, it's crazy. Um, she is starting a film company and there she is right here. And her goal right here, which I love by the way, is to take film production and place it here in Arizona, okay? So that is awesome and exciting all at the same time. They're talking about certain things they're trying to do um, and how their um, or, or production company, by the way, is called Camelback Productions. And they're working on a, on a couple films already, looking to work on a reality TV show concept focused on real estate. So maybe yours truly will get in there. I don't know, right? But I would love to do some real estate TV as I'm kind of doing right here on YouTube, right? But if, if not, that's okay. YouTube is a phenomenal place to be able to talk real estate with you guys. So I'm grateful for that. But in any event, being on a real reality TV show would be hilarious, I think. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, I'd love to know if you guys think I, I have what it takes to be on a reality TV show. In any event, guys, there's some cool things here. Um, the long-term economic, economic benefits of the state are huge, right, for the film industry based upon them coming to Arizona and the tax incentives are adding up. This is awesome. But let's keep rock and rolling here, guys. So they had a launch party. They're serious. There they're, they're, is some people there. The mayor was there. They are serious about bringing part of the film industry down to Phoenix and the Arizona area. What I love is this last paragraph right here, okay? Nicely Entertainment announced its expansion into Arizona and said it will start production on its first movie in the state this month. That's exciting, guys. That's exciting. Let's get some of that film industry into Arizona. I know some of the local education, higher education, universities, etc., colleges have film um, there too as well. And a lot of people do it, but then they have to go to LA or wherever, maybe New York, to do some of that. So it'd be kind of cool to keep that right here. Last summer, uh, Acacia Film um, also uh, built a studio, guys, production training facility in the Valley after passing of the film tax incentive bill. Their studio complex will include 14 sound stages and support offices across 624,000 square feet and 70 acres of land. Guys, it's coming. I love it. I love it over here to some information that has to do with the tourism, right? We talked about it. Guys, this is big right here. Arizona hotel tax revenue expected to reach record heights in 2023. Now, this is a picture of the Renaissance Hotel, which is right next to the Arizona Cardinal Stadium in Westgate out in Glendale, um, which was jam-packed for the Super Bowl, of course, because you can walk right to the stadium easily, which is awesome. Check it out. Here we go. The state of Arizona and local communities and municipalities are expected to collect more tax revenue from hotels in 2023 than in any previous year. That's huge. That's really good for our state and for the tourism hotel industry, I should say more specifically, they are expected to generate more than $875 million. That is a ginormous number, right? Very, very big, which is great. And then of course you get taxes off of that and all kinds of stuff that, that benefits the state as well. Check this out though. In 2023, Arizona is projected to have the sixth highest hotel occupancy in the country behind Hawaii, California, Alaska. Alaska, they must not have very many hotels, right? Florida and Washington, DC. Sorry, Alaska, no knock on you. I want to go. I've never been and it's beautiful. Um, I just got to imagine that, you know, the, the amount of people going to 
Um, these other states are probably a little more, but I, I will be there, Alaska. So don't you worry, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. All right, and then here we go. The, uh, they also said it's a good time to be a, to work in the hotel industry as well because the, um, the, the pay has gone up. Uh, hotel employment is, you know, overall is down compared to the rest of the country. It's at 11.7%, which seems high. Compared to the state's unemployment rate, which is below 4%, it is. Uh, however, still lower than it was, and it's projected to have the ninth highest hotel employment in the country this year. Okay, so even at 11.7%, it's a very good number. All right, now, with the hotels and piggybacking on that, we have this article about the Cactus League spring training. Guys, for those who don't know, half of Major League Baseball teams actually come down to Phoenix and they play in the Cactus League here. The other half go to um, Florida and they play in the Grapefruit League, okay? So you have half and half split up playing spring training ball between you know end of February through um, about the end of March or so. So it is a phenomenal time. It's going to really help our economy. It does every single year. That's the Cubs' newer stadium. They're down here. And uh, we have 15 Major League Baseball teams that play in 10 parks across Maricopa County, which is pretty much all the Phoenix area, right? It's set to begin, as it always does here uh, in 2023, on Friday coming up here. And we'll run through March 28th. Now, what's cool, a couple things here. Um, talks about the roots and what, what, it, what it does. But it's an economic impact of $363 million. Okay, which is fantastic. And what they're talking about is there's a couple um, couple rules changes and hotels. Let's go with the tourism. Here we go. Hotels expected to be full. The Valley's hotel industry is coming off a major win earlier this month with the Super Bowl and of course the PGA Waste Management Open. And it's going to continue and just rock and roll um, through um, the Cactus League Spring Training. They expect to have more than 90% occupancy during the month of March, which is, guys, it's huge. So if you're a hotel operator, if you are somebody who benefits from tax revenue, which we kind of all do as people who live in Arizona, and of course, maybe if you are an Airbnb or VRBO owner, this will help as well. Because we all saw the report that VRBOs and Airbnbs were down for the Super Bowl weekend because of a little too much saturation. Um, but hopefully some of those will get booked up now. I have a couple of them myself, and I have noticed that for whatever the reason, the, uh, the occupancy has increased the past week or so on those properties. So that's good. That's really, really good. Um, new rules too as well. This I thought was kind of cool. You know, if you're a baseball fan, right? They are actually going to uh, be implementing the, the, um, the two new rules, which are bigger bases. Where are they at right here? Bigger bases and a pitch clock. So if you think baseball is too slow because you like, uh, you like sports that are a little more fast uh, paced, this is gonna help. You're gonna like baseball more because they have a pitch clock now and the pitcher can't take forever to throw a ball on the mound, right? This is good stuff. All right, moving on. The hotel industry is back. It's going to be um, great. It's it's pre-COVID you know, uh, revenue numbers and, and, and it's gonna be awesome for our state and our um, employment, okay? Now, this is the, the plant for Nestle, right? Now, this is cool. Now, this is, this is water. Now, we're gonna jump into water, guys. Now, stay with me here because there's two things about water we're gonna cover here today, okay? This is interesting because as you know, or maybe you don't, but let's talk about it for a second. Arizona is known as the Silicon Valley of the Southwest, right? Specifically Chandler, Arizona, but now we have TSMC going to North Phoenix. And so Phoenix in general is gonna be known as the Silicon Valley of the Southwest. Chips take a lot of water, a ton of water. Now most of it is recycled, which is great. So this is a little nuance that's gonna be interesting because this is a new plant that's coming out in the West Valley that Nestle, you guys know Nestle, right? Um, this is a coffee creamer. Check this out, look at this thing. This huge plant for just making coffee creamer, that's how big the coffee creamer industry is. Crazy, right? You, you wouldn't think that, but it's insane. It's 630,000 square feet, right? For coffee creamer. I mean, I love coffee creamer, don't, don't, get, don't get me wrong. So I get it, I'm, I'm part of the people that support <laughs> the company Nestle, right? Um, but here we go. It takes water. Now, what they're proposing is a change in the law in terms of how this works. So what they're saying is that this, first of all, this investment is $775 million. It's going to bring 350 new jobs to Glendale, which is awesome, right? More jobs coming, more plants coming, more revenue for the state coming. This is good stuff, okay? Now, what's the deal with the water, okay? Let's get down here and go over it. With the water that they're gonna use, which is quite a bit, in fact, I think it says right here, right? Last year, Nestle had estimated its annual water use for its new plant would range between 280 million to 547 million gallons of water, okay? That's the average of about, you know, up to maybe 5,000 homes in Arizona, okay, that usage. Now, that all being said, 
What they want to do is have the ability to reuse and recycle, reclaim their water they're gonna use and their wastewater without having to put it back into the city system or a private company system like Epcor, okay? So if I share my screen here, so we need to find a solution, right here you can see that. Uh, Epcor is a private company that's actually, you know, um, a company in Arizona that, that provides water services um, and wastewater treatment, et cetera, et cetera, through the parts of, of Phoenix in Arizona here, okay? But what they wanna do is they're hoping to change the long established Arizona water law so it can conserve and recycle its own groundwater without additional cost, a process that is not allowed by existing laws or permits. So they want to, without taking wastewater and putting it into the system that, that provides it, the city, like I don't know how it is where you guys are at, guys, right? But in Arizona and Phoenix, most of the municipalities provide the sewage and water for the houses of that suburb, let's say, right? Well, um, they don't wanna do that. They wanna be able to do it themselves because they will not have to pay as many fees and they have the ability to, and the infrastructure to invest to create it themselves. Interesting, right? So over here, the new uh, proposed solution, the new bill would allow an industrial user like Nestle to treat and store wastewater underneath its facility so it can reuse the water for free, um, free, no extra charge, right? Through water credits, rather than existing the existing option of placing the water back into the public system that's managed by utilities and having to pay to draw the water back out, okay? Again, what's Arizona doing right now? Arizona is going big on incentives, maybe changing some laws and things of that nature to attract the top level industry because for so many years, for decades, Arizona didn't have a lot of corporate jobs, a lot of corporations. I mean, I, I think back in 2005 when I started in real estate, at that time, I want to say the entire state of Arizona only had three, if I remember correctly, three at the time, Fortune 500 companies located in the entire state, right? That's not much, whereas I think New York City had like 47 alone, right? Something like that. So. Um, they, they really made a big push and it's working over the past decade or so. Now, I want to show you this too, guys. This is interesting. Glossary terms. Because when you talk about water, which is important, this conversation is not going away for Arizona for quite some time. And again, you'll see in the next article we talk about that there's there appears to be, at this point at least, plenty of water for plenty of time. However, trying to get the water isn't necessarily because there isn't any. It's because of politics, because of contractual you know, rights and laws and who owns it and all that fun stuff, right? So it's pretty complicated actually. But glossary of terms, acre foot, the amount of water to cover one acre of land with a depth of one foot or approximately over 325,000 gallons of water. On average, that three Arizona household uses about one acre foot of water annually. So three Arizona households use one acre foot annually. Interesting, right? Aquifer, we kind of know what that is. Underground water storage and uh, long-term storage credits, okay. Acre foot's the one that most people don't know about, okay? I wanna make sure we cover that. Now, this was the hot topic. Rio Verde water, Rio Verde foothills specifically, not Rio Verde proper, okay? There's a difference. But Rio Verde foothills, um, they have a water proposal. It is now solidified, and guess what? The city of Scottsdale is back in it. I know you guys probably assumed that would happen. You were right. And city of Scottsdale has capitulated and has agreed to deliver water to Rio Verde foothills for the next two years, okay? And it's interesting, they, they, they unanimously agreed at this point to give them um, two more years to figure this out. Now, hopefully this time, Real Water won't wait until the deadline to try to figure something out and everybody panics, right? Um, but they have two more years to figure this out and get something permanently in place, whether it's their own district, water district, or you know, hiring a, a company like Epcor to permanently solve the issue. But there's there's people who you know agree and disagree on both sides. Here we go, guys, the East Valley City, Scottsdale, uh, deal was contingent on receiving 600 acre feet of raw water from a third party in which the city would supply 126 acre feet of water at the Pima Road filling station each year. Okay, uh, then it goes to the cost now, but Maricopa County isn't quite satisfied with this solution. Why? Because they're the ones who actually provide the actual hauling of the water up to the Rio Verde foothills for those who don't have, you know, wells, right? You haul water, you put it in a container and bada boom, bada bing. So uh, Maricopa County would contract the water haulers, there you go, and so here we go. Scottsdale's on the hook, Rio Verde has water for two years for sure, and so now at this point, you know, we're just gonna wait and see what happens for a permanent water solution, but I think that Rio Verde is serious now. I don't think they took City of Scottsdale serious last time, and so now with this new deal, I think we're gonna have a long-term permanent solution done 
over the next two years. This is something that if you're thinking about buying, you need to be aware of, and I would not be doing my job as a YouTuber if I didn't make you aware of this because you're watching a real estate show, and that is loan level pricing adjustments, okay? LLPAs, what is that? Well, in a nutshell, every lender that gives you a loan if you're in financing when you go to buy a house is going to have some sort of adjustment on the rate they offer you based on your financial structure, your finances that you have, your debt to income ratio, your FICO score, etc., and the type of property you're buying. You will get the best, the best rate right now if you're above a 740 on FICO score. You'll get the best rate if you're D DTI, you qualify for a state conventional loan, and you're under 49% debt to income on your ratio there. So you'll get those great things right now, but come April 15th, any loan that doesn't close before April 15th will be subject to loan level pricing adjustments that Fannie and Freddie just came out with which are going to make the person, let's say, who's looking to maybe leverage um, and buy more investment properties or a second home even, or just someone who doesn't take care of their FICO score or their debt, let's say, it's gonna make that a little more challenging to buy a home. For example, now the, the creme de la creme FICO score is 740 and up. You get the best rate from a FICO score standpoint. Now it's going to 780. So if you're below 780, you no longer will be giving the best rate out there possible from a FICO score standpoint only, if that makes sense, okay? And then from there, it'll go down in 20 point increments, 760, 760 to 740, 740, 720, and where you fall on that line will determine um, the interest rate that you'll get offered to you by the lender, okay? So it's important that if you don't wanna mess with that, because maybe your FICO score is not as good right now, you may wanna think about possibly trying to close on that loan prior to April 15th, which means you probably need to be under contract by around March 15th on average because the escrow period is going to be about 30 days on average, right? So a little tidbit there. Obviously, um, oh, not obviously, but then your debt to income ratio is going to go from 49% where it is right now down to 40%. So can you still get a loan if you're above 40%? Yes, you can on a conventional. That goes up to 49% debt to income ratio, okay? However, if you're above 40%, you now will not be offered the best rate possible out there if you're above 40%. If you're below 40%, you're still good from that standpoint. So some little things here, and by the way, if you are buying an investment property or a second home or a condo, you now have additional adjustments that will you'll take a hit on the interest rate with. So guys, these are things that are coming down the pike that you need to be aware of and working with a, a an advisor who keeps your finger on the pulse here like we do at Cooking Associates, important, just as important now more than ever. So give us a call, 480. Um, 660-5974 with any question you have. And you can always email us at info at cookingassociatesaz.com and we will definitely get you hooked up with somebody on a team who's more than competent, capable to help you navigate all these waters and all these changes that are coming. And hopefully they don't last very long. Hopefully the government or whoever you know says, hey, that's 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 stymieing the, the the housing market a little bit. So let's, let's remove those, right? But we'll see, we don't know. All we know there is that they're coming April 15th, unless for some reason, they get turned they get they get turned down because maybe the lobbying of the NAR is too strong or who knows what will happen, right? But we'll see. So stay tuned and you'll be fully informed. So anyways, guys, let us know if you have any questions. We have, I appreciate everyone watching here today. Uh, like us, subscribe, and we'll see you next Thursday at four o'clock. Take care.